Canada has given IndyCar some of its most talented drivers, Greg Moore, Paul Tracy, and Jacques Villeneuve, just to name a few. However, with every successful and mainstream driver, there are quite a few that never had good results and were forgotten with time. The topic of today's video is the oldest we've covered in this series, so it's had the most amount of time to become a distant and fading memory. Today, we talk about Ludwig Heimrath. Welcome back to All IndyCar the motorsports history show looking at the most interesting stories in American open wheel racing. Ludwig Heimrath was born September 9th, 1956 in Scarborough, Canada. He was the son of Ludwig Heimrath Sr., who was a great sports car driver and the 1977 Trans Am champion. Ludwig Jr. started his racing career in go-karts and Canadian Formula Fords, where he competed from 1976 to 1978. He won the 1979 and 1980 Ontario Formula Ford Championship with seven wins over those two seasons. He then moved to IMSA to compete in select GTO races in 1982 and 1983. 1983 would also see him race in Formula Super V, where he won a race, got four podiums, two poles, and three fastest laps. Ludwig finished fifth in the point standings this year ahead of drivers like Mark Dismore, Michael Andretti, and Ari Leyendijk. Ludwig's second season in Super Vs was even more impressive as he won three races, got another four podiums, three poles, and four fastest laps. 1984 would see Heimrath make his IndyCar debut at Road America. This ended pretty poorly when his gearbox went kaput on lap 8. His next star in the series would come at Mid-Ohio in 1985, where he once again DNF'd after an accident with Howdy Holmes. This would be Heimrath's last start in kart until 1987, when he returned full-time with Dick Simon Racing. Unfortunately for Ludwig, this season wouldn't go well. The first two races would end poorly with the gearbox issue at Long Beach, and a CV joint issue at Phoenix. Indy would also be poor after a crash on lap 25. At the Milwaukee Mile a week later, Heimrath would finish 10th. This would end up being his first of what would be six races he ever finished his IndyCar career. The next five races would all end with Ludwig at the races with mechanical issues. By the time we reached the checkered flag at Pocono, Ludwig had only finished twice, the 10th place at Milwaukee and a 12th place finish at Pocono. Ludwig was a talented driver, and when he finished, he did pretty damn well for the equipment that he was in. But when you're in extremely unreliable equipment, it doesn't mean anything. 1987 saw Ludwig retire in 10 of the 12 races he started that season, and he had a best finish of 10th. Ludwig's part-time season in 1988 with Hemmelgarn Racing would be practically the same thing, but would see Ludwig get his best IndyCar finish of 7th at Miami. In 1989, Heimrath stayed with Hemmelgarn Racing, but with more DNFs and two DNQs coming at Michigan and Laguna Seca, he couldn't find success, and after that, Ludwig would leave IndyCar Racing for good. Of all the videos I I've done in this series so far, this one has got to be one of the most unfortunate, if not the most unfortunate. Of the 30 IndyCar starts that Ludwig Heimrath ever made, he retired from all but six of them. Unlike previous drivers we've discussed in this series who rarely finished though, I think Ludwig Heimrath could have had a solid career and maybe even bring home a championship. I know it sounds far-fetched, but you have to have at least some modicum of talent to beat drivers like Michael Andretti and Ari Leyendijk. Unfortunately for Ludwig, though, he was never given the equipment to show off his talent, and much like Matthias Lace, he never had the time to show off his talent before he was swept under the rug. 